You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant, too, he said, You take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you are shocked by the last lines of the gospel today when the king calls those who opposed him and had them slain before him. And I was curious about this because there's a a story of King Herod the Great in the after the murder of Julius Caesar in Rome. There was a civil war for the Roman leadership between Augustus Caesar, who finally won that whole conflict, and Mark Antonius, together with the other conspirators who had conspired against Julius Caesar and killed him, Brutus and Cassius. And then there's a whole drama, Julius Caesar, by Shakespeare about that. And then afterwards, um, Herod, as a local king here, had sided not with Augustus, but with the others. And then they lost, so Herod was now in trouble in front of Augustus, so he had to make a trip to Rome. To, and he actually laid down his crown in front of Augustus, and he says, uh, you decide, but I want you to know that if you make me king, I will, you will have my complete loyalty. I'm always loyal to my friends. That was his logic. And the Augustus accepted the offer. But while Herod was in Rome, uh, his wife and was working with two of the, her sons to get them to replace the father. And when Herod came back, he was livid, and he obviously put an end to his sons' lives. And it's a, the story isn't far from here, but also today I was reading a few chapters of Flavius Josephus' account, The Antiquities of the Jews, about this period of the Herods. And it's amazing the intrigues and the slaughters and the, uh, the competition uh, between them and also the alliances with other powers to 
boost their authority, and that already had been the pattern under the Hasmoneans as well. So it's a very uh, brutal tribal or interfamilial feud as well, continually generation generation, and all of the the um, intermarriage and the connections, and then the competition uh, to. If one brother is strong and he wipes out the other brothers, then he doesn't have to share the kingdom and all of that. So it was a very rough time. And when Jesus is speaking the parables, he doesn't take something that's very different from the people's mindset to teach the kingdom. He speaks in terms of what they understand and what their history has been. And in this way, Jesus is showing us here a couple of things about the responsibility we have for the gifts we receive. We receive huge gifts of life, and we can't treat them like trivia, disposables, throwaways. The gift of faith, the gift of hope, the gift of love. These are the greatest coins we could get, the greatest talents. The people in our family, our relationship with God and with others. These are bigger than all the other things, the ability to play Beethoven, the ability, the ability to recite the great poets of antiquity, the ability to teach all the subjects in the university, uh, to have research that discovers new cures. These are secondary talents compared to the faith, hope, and charity I have to see the world through God's eyes, to be able to trust in God no matter what the problems are in the stormy sea, to be able to love the people entrusted, especially to my immediate love, and to live like this, to love God with all my heart and all my soul. This is the biggest talent. So we have responsibility. We got the gift. It needs to grow. It needs to grow. And this is what the parable is teaching us. And we have great examples today in St. Cecilia and her husband and the husband's brother. She's the one that's particularly celebrated. And then we have examples here with this mother and the way she encourages her son. It must be the hardest thing for a parent to lose a child. And then to see their child lost to martyrdom. Now we have all of the tragedy about over the hostages and all the people killed and children killed in this conflict. And it's very sad. But then to have this type of situation that's described for us in the book of Maccabees with this mother and her seven sons all in one day executed, uh, this is a very, very uh, heart-rending. And there's a beautiful kernel of faith expressed in her uh, thoughts to her son. And he's the youngest of seven kids. And she re reflects on how we receive the breath of life. The author of our life is God. He's the one to give us life. And then if things go wrong, he can rebuild it if we are persecuted, if we are put to death. This is the faith of the martyrs. This story has inspired Christians uh, all through the centuries because of its radicality. And then we have her words again to her son about asking him, contemplate the universe, contemplate your life. I beg you, child, look at the heavens and the earth and see all that is in them, and God who made them. Do not be afraid of the people who killed the body. This word's in Jesus' mouth. So the, Jesus mediates this whole way of saying things. Be afraid rather of the one who kills us eternally. Satan and sin and all of that. The great virtue of fidelity, just like Eleazar yesterday and now this mother and her sons. Uh, this is a wonderful examples. And I would like to finish off with the line from the psalm. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. And that's why we live. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.